Right, so welcome everyone. Uh, this is my new camera. From now on I'm going to use this one. I have no idea how is it working, so it's going to be a long journey to learn it. But this video is going to, it's not going to be about my camera, it's going to be something else. So, there is this guy on Instagram called Ash, and he hit me up and uh, pretty much that's what he told me. Uh, after following, he, following me for a month, a uh, month and a half, um, I was posting a story about reading Ray Dalio principles, I think. Yeah, that's the one. And he says, Hey man, great choice of book. Amazing content in there. Uh, one of my favorite reads too. Actually a really good book. If you have not checked it out, check it out. Um, I was wondering if you were up for being my feature creator this month in my newsletter. And I'm like, what? Like me, a feature creator? Uh, but I was like, yeah, whatever, like, of course, yes, sure. Uh, point is, uh, I said yes right away and I was, you know, procrastinating to record this for, I think, more than a week or two weeks. So I feel a little bit embarrassed, but I'm going to get there. Um, so what is this? Cause then I just, you know, started to dig like, what is this modern afflatus? I'm not sure if it, this is how to pronounce, but, uh, hopefully yes. So on their website, it says that modern afflatus, uh, the practical guide to keeping our humanity in the digital age and inspiration to do what matters. Uh, I really like it, like do what matters and, you know, keeping our humanity in the digital age. So I was like, yeah, it's quite interesting. And then if I just scroll down, basically there is an explanation for afflatus, a divine creative impulse or inspiration. So I'm like, Damn, yeah, like that's something I, yeah, I really want to do. So he sent me a couple interview questions and asked me to, you know, rather write a message, a podcast. So I was like, fuck it. I just put it to you, put it out to YouTube. Uh, if, if you want to check out the website, it's going to be, uh, in the description. So what is it actually? And, um, yeah, let's see the questions. Quite honestly, I'm not too prepared because I wanted, wanted them to be, um, a little bit, you know, in the moment, like not really, you know, working out all the, all the answers. I'm not going to lie. I read them two times. Um, but yeah, I'm, I still haven't really, you know, put in the time to think about them. So I'm just going to, you know, go whatever in my mind right away. So there's going to be eight questions. The first question, what keeps you motivated to keep going when you stumble or face a roadblock, challenges, setbacks, uh, whether in the gym or in business? Now, I think I've already talked about this one uh, in a podcast of my friend, um, but I was thinking about it a lot. So what really keeps me going? Um, if you know Simon Sinek and you have already read his book, Why? Um, Start with Why, that's the title of the book. Um, you pretty much know what I would be talking about. Uh, but my inner drive, my why for, um, for pretty much everything I do is really strong. So if I don't have a really strong why, then I don't do things. And uh, whenever I, you know, face a major setback, um, my why is the thing that actually, you know, keeps me going, uh, keeps me go forward. Uh, and pretty much simple as that. Um, another thing is that I'm really, um, I always keep it in my head that uh, life is a roller coaster. So whether in business, whether in sport, um, in order to succeed, there is going to be major setbacks. Like it's all ups and downs. So when, whenever I feel down, I tend to, you know, remind myself that this is actually a good thing. Like without this, um, without that, it would be so easy. Everyone would do that. And then you just wouldn't stand out, you know, that, that wouldn't make you happy. Like in order to be happy and feel that you accomplished something, you need to feel down at times. So pretty much that's it. That wraps it pretty well. Um, question number two, what does the ideal cheat meal look like to you? Now, <laughs> I don't really have an ideal cheat meal, honestly. Like if it would be, then I would say, I don't know, like go to an all you can eat and eat everything I can <laughs> that I fancy. Um, I like to eat different cheat meals at different times. Um, but let me answer another question. That's not this question, but uh, about cheat meals. Um, I don't really think about a cheat meal that, oh yeah, it is a cheat meal. Uh, because throughout, you know, seven years of bodybuilding and pretty much, uh, 
four to five years of dieting. And when I say diet, that's even bulking, it, bulking up is a diet as well. Um, whatever it's cutting or bulking, that's a diet. Uh, let me be clear about that. Uh, so whenever I'm dieting, um, meaning I'm cutting down, so that kind of diet, weight loss diet, um, then nowadays I'm really conscious about how much I can actually eat. So if I eat a cheat meal, I know that, let's say I eat a hamburger on a pizza, I know what kind of hunger I should feel later on in order to, you know, put in the same amount of calories. So let me put it this way. If you are eating only rice, chicken and broccoli or veggies, um, you will feel all right. You will feel full, somewhat full when you're dieting. If you would be eating the same amount of calories from pizza or hamburger, uh, then you would be hungry throughout the day. So whenever I eat something cheat meal-ish, I know that I have to feel more hunger in order to be the same place, if that makes sense to you. Um, that's how I usually diet uh, nowadays. Uh, but that's not contest prep. If I, if I want to prep for a contest, um, then I measure my food as everyone else. So third one. You are originally from Hungary. What's one thing you would recommend people do if they visit that everyone seems to be overlooking, missing out on? This is a really, really hard question. Um, I can't, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, but I know one thing. If you ever go to Hungary, the best thing in Hungary, and I think it answers the question. Uh, you would expect me to say, uh, you know, an interesting uh, castle or shopping center or some hidden place, you know, in Hungary or a certain area that is really interesting. Um, but here's the thing. Hungary, if you go to Hungary and if you are a guy, you're looking for beautiful girls because Hungarian, like the, the best thing I like about Hungary are girls, like girls over here is extraordinarily pretty and they are really nice and kind as well. So guys, if you come here, um, look for girls. Um, ladies, I'm sorry, I don't really know. Go for, like most of the people always say, always tell to me that, oh yeah, Budapest is so amazing. Go to the countryside, you know. Um, maybe go to Jula, but I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to let you down. I don't really have anything, you know, extreme uh, for you. Question number four. You've been setting yourself daily challenges recently. Which one has been the most difficult? Which one has been your favorite? Favorite. Favorite was the 90 days uh, NoFap challenge. Uh, so getting rid of dopamine addiction, aka NoFap challenge, it is day 16. Uh, is the so third day in the NoFap challenge and I feel super hyped, pumped, energetic and everything in between those lines. Day 60. I feel on fire. I feel awesome. Guys, I'm super excited. And the reason is it's done. I done nine days, uh, which ended up to be the most extreme nofap challenge where I don't watch porn. I don't masturbate and I don't have sex for 90 days. And it was quite challenging. I failed it at least two or three times before in the last one year. I wanted to do that, but I've never really had, you know, the I don't know what you need. Like, I, I was not that strong mentally to, you know, do that. But this time it was not even that hard. I just, I felt like I'm just smashing it, you know. Um, so that was my favorite. The hardest one. So that was another really hard one. That was cold shower. So you, every single morning you do cold shower. Let's take the cold shower. It's going to be fucking bad. Um, sometimes you just don't feel like you don't want to do that. Um, so that's a really hard one. Hardest one was, um, that you have, uh, braces on your arm and, um, uh, every single time you complain, you have to put it from your right to the left and, you know, back to the left, to the right. And you have to try to keep going for 20 days without complaining. Now that is like, I told and I'm, I never complain. I felt like, yeah, I don't complain. It's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. The first day I switched the braces three times. So I was like, fuck, like what is happening? And then, and then, yeah, I just eventually gave up on that one. I couldn't go longer for than like one or two days. So definitely if you are looking for a really, really, really hard challenge, go for that one. 
it's really easy not to you know realize um, that you are complaining because when I did that, I told all my friends, mom, dad, and you know everyone surrounding me that that's the challenge I do. So whenever they you know hear me complaining, point me out right away. So first I was I, I told them I'm going I'm going pretty well, and then mom pointed me out that oh yeah that's a complaint. I'm like oh damn like you know but from from the left to the right. So yeah that's that's a tough one. On your Instagram channel, you often share life updates and stories of what's going on in your day-to-day. How did you overcome the confidence to present and share your stories in a language you are a native in? Well, when I started this, I was hesitating for a long time whether to do it in Hungarian or in English. I spoke quite alright English, um, even though Hungarians don't really speak English uh, pretty well because our our language is just, you know, in terms of pronunciation, it's just so far away from what you have to do in, in English. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, step number was one was to decide whether I want to do it Hungarian or in English. And I was like if, like, if my goal is actually to have an impact, to motivate others, whether it's fitness or then it, you know, um, translated a little bit more into like business uh, and, you know, personal life, like self-development, self-growth, um, then I want to have the biggest impact possible. So there is, here is the thing. If I would do it in Hungarian, um, you know, starting it and getting the, you know, audience growing, that would be much easier and quicker because this is just, you know, a smaller market. That's my mother tongue. I already know a lot of people, so I can just reach so many people easily. So Hungarian market, easier compared to, you know, speaking in English. English, just so many people out there. Like, I like if I do that, I'm, I'm running a marathon. I want to go. I'm not planning to do this for like one year, two years. I'm going, I'm going to be here 10 years from now documenting what I do. Uh, documenting my life, you know, trying to motivate others, inspire others, build a community. Um, that's what I want to do. That's what I aspire. You can, you can pretty much see it on my face every single day, uh, whenever I'm posting something or writing something in the caption or engaging with you guys. So yeah, that, that was the, that was the reason I, I decided to do it in English. I never really adopted it, like whether I want to do it in English or not. Um, at the beginning, I just started it. Like I, I was really, I felt really weird. <laughs> I felt really weird speaking in English in in Hungary. Um, and I just got used to it, you know. It's getting better and better. I'm, I'm, I still struggle. Like, I can't really speak the same way I want to speak in Hungarian, even though I speak really quick. Um, my brain, you know, processes information really quickly. So if I, if I would be to speak Hungarian, that would be really, really quick. But I think that, it, that answers the question. So question number six. What is a piece of advice you would give to yourself at 18? Or if you could put a message up on a billboard billboard for people to see, what would it say? Quit school. Run. Like, quit school. It's not going to help you, bro. You're 18. Um, you're all right. You've already learned from school what you need to learn from school. Uh, now go and do whatever you please, like, go, do chase your dreams, you know, ride more BMX, um, do more bodybuilding, um, try to build a small business, um, try to go work, uh, work with someone, work with part of a team, do whatever you wanna, but don't go to uni, don't go, don't do that. That would be the message now, I do understand that if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, there is no way, you know, around. But if you are, if you are about to go to a business school like myself, no, nope, don't do that. Just, just, just try it out. Like, from real life experiences, it's going to, like, you can go, you can go way further. I learned more in the one and a half year when I'm, you know, trying to do a business myself than in the, you know, whole five years of education in the university, five and a half years, whatever it was, it was five years, up oh, then four, <laughs> just, you know, it just felt so long. Question number seven, what impact do you want to leave on the world? Should it be one impact? I want people, like the main purpose I'm here is I want people to be happy and I want people to understand that to be happy 
does not mean to be happy uh, at a certain moment. It means that you do things that set you up to be happy. Um, and it's not that easy. It's actually really hard to be happy because in order to be happy, to maximize your long-term happiness, that's what I have in my Instagram bio. I want people to maximize their long-term happiness. Sometimes you have to say no. So usually you have to say no for things. Usually you have to say no for um, for instant happiness. Just let me give you an example um, and you would understand. Chocolate. If you eat chocolate, what is the first order consequence of eating chocolate? You feel happy, right? You eat the chocolate, it tastes so good. Um, second order consequence, you get fat. If you eat a lot of chocolate, you definitely... Um, third order consequence, you can fuck up your teeth or, you know, stuff like that. So what happens? First order consequence is really good. Second one, nope. Third one, nope. Fourth one, nope. Fifth one, nope. So now you understand, like, in life, it's, 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 it's actually feels like someone is testing us. Like, you wake up. Do you want to meditate for half an hour? No, no, I, I don't have time for that because I'm... I'd rather just do my thing and at night I watch serious. But if you decide to rather meditate half an hour, on the long run, you would be happier than the one who would, you know, just watch, you know, serious. Watching serious is fun. It's fucking fun. It makes you happy. But meditating on the long run makes you happier. And there are like so many things like this. I can go forever with this, but this is the main impact I want to leave in the world. Um, you know, Think about the second and third order consequences. Uh, if you want something in life, go work. Work is not going to be fancy all the time. It's going to feel, you know, sometimes when you go to the gym, it's not good. You just don't want to go to the gym. But on the long run, you're going to enjoy, you know, being, you know, shredded, ribbed, or just, you know, feeling healthy, like looking good, feeling good in your body. That's the main point of it. Question number eight, where can people follow you on your adventures? Instagram, definitely. I will usually do daily updates. And for longer form of content, IGTV and YouTube. Um, this year, next year, YouTube is going to be, be big for me. I would put out, you know, uh, much more content. So yeah, pretty much that's it. Ash, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be um, a feature creator of the month. I'm subscribed. Guys, check it out. Uh, maybe subscribe yourself if you want to. And if you watched it to this point, it would mean the word to me if you leave uh, if you leave a piece of information about yourself or you comment the topic, any of the questions, like pretty much anything, feel free to comment. I would definitely read every single comment and answer uh, surely. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Why not? It's free. And pretty much that's it. If you haven't subscribed already, why not? You know, maybe subscribe. And see you next time. With everything has happened to you, you can either feel sorry for yourself or treat what has happened as a gift. Everything is an opportunity to grow or an obstacle to keep you from growing. You get to choose. For 2019, I want you all to suffocate your excuses and finally start to live the life you've always wanted to. Peace.